traveling Mentula for the past 20 years. Problem is that Mentula has been pretty much void of towns until recently. Three years ago, the miners of the Nexus appeared out of nowhere and began building up the land. In this series, we shall visit the new towns of Mentula. I am Dominic Dingledick, and this is Dingledick Discovers. We are here at Cobbleton, town of the miners, the first ever hamlet to be built in New Mentula. But grand as it is, today we are not touring its majestic city walls. Instead, we are heading off to Wevelton, the newest city built by the miners of the Nexus. Wevelton is not as accessible as other Mentula nations. It is located above the clouds and floats a hundred blocks above sea level. Unless you possess the power to fly like some sort of majestic albatross, train travel is the only means to get there. At Wevelton City, we shall be met by Sir Richmond Braxton, multi-billion, illionaire, entrepreneur and self-confessed lover of kidney beans. The first building we encounter is Braxton Tower. As the name suggests, it is named after Braxton Bears, a tiny breed of mammal that live in the forests below Wevelton. Coincidentally, Sir Richmond Braxton fully funded the tower's development. I first approached the miners of the Nexus when I heard they were building this marvellous sky island. Uh, I thought to myself, Richmond Braxton, what a handsome chap you are, this island of theirs has your name written all over it, only it didn't. So I thought to myself, let's make it so. Oh, I thought the building has HC on the front, for Wevelton City. Nonsense. The HC stands for handsome chap, obviously a homage to myself. Right, right, of course. Speaking of signs, why is the clock at the top of the tower always displaying 11.51 at night? That, my good man may look like a clock, but in fact it is a reference to my greatness. 23 is the number of times I have been married, and 51 is the size of my huge ballroom. It is 51 meters long. It's a ballroom I have back at home. I am very, very, very proud of it. Um, ballroom. I see. So tell us, what is it like living in Wevelton City? Live here? Whatever do you mean? No, no. I live in the Braxton complex in the Pishton Valley. And what are the miners of the Nexus like? Well, yes, they're, they're a handsome lot of fellows, all with their different, uh, uh, you know, cultural differences and whatnot. But yes, they work very well together, as you can see by this majestic building they have built for me. After meeting with Sir Braxton, we head up a small flight of stairs which leads us to the city hoppers. The hoppers are an intricate train system that links all five of Wevelton's prefectures together. The first island we visit is New York. This area is the residential centre of Wevelton. If you ever come to live in this fine city, this is where you're most likely to find residence. Here, we can find flats to suit all price ranges, from the exquisitely majestic 360 tower to the highly affordable eggshell terraces. You can also set up business here. New York Island boasts some of Mentula's most respected enterprises, such as Red Anvil Enterprises, Golden Apple Computers, and Bet and Lose Betting, to name but a few. If you're looking to get hitched, here is where you can find the Church of St. Webby II. Here we meet Father Cascaron, the rector of the church. Hello, Your Exhib. How does it feel to be the priest in charge of such an important parish? Well, my son, Wevelton has a great significance to me. Saint Webby II was a bishop of the Cathedral of Old Wevelton. 
before it was destroyed. I have based my life around his teachings, and it is a great honor to serve this church named after him. Fascinating stuff! But how do you feel about the Cock and Two Balls Casino, based so near your church? I believe that the casino is a grand edifice erected by the miners. Just the other day, I headed over there with Monsignor Mondongo, and we were playing the slots till we were both exhausted. So, what can you tell us about the miners of the Nexus? Well, the miners of the Nexus are a very interesting lot. They do not come to church very often, but deep down inside their hearts are golden. One last question, Father. Out of curiosity, how, how is it that you make those two books um, float about and the pages move around with such magnificence? Well, my dear child, I do not want to give my secrets away, but you are such a handsome chap that I will bear with it. You see, when I give my sermon, the people I cannot see from my waist down. So what I use is my... So, quickly moving on, just a short walk from the church we can see the miners of the Nexus Zone Guild. Due to their increased popularity as of late, the miners have begun building guilds all over Mentula for their increased membership. Here, we have the great privilege to meet up with two of its members, Rastrol and Bardock Germs. So hello there, miners of the Nexus. It's a great pleasure to finally meet you. I'd, I'd like to start off by asking, how was it building such a grand, vast town such as Wevelton? Well, um... Wevelton, well, it kind of has a important, special place in my heart because here is where I should have grown up. I mean, Popo took me away and, and took me into the future, and I never got to realize this project. Um, so, yeah, it's it's quite quite an honor and a privilege to build this for me personally. I, I don't know about for Rastral, but... Yeah, well, for me, it was a bit of a pain in the ass because it's a really big... Oh. Four, four big islands and you know it took a lot of time lots of effort it was worth it in the end but yeah the the most time consuming build i've ever had to do oh great that is great stuff um okay so out of all of the buildings here in Wevelton, which one would you say is your favorite rastral well i really like the power station because not only is it big and grand but it also powers the whole of the island. So, yeah, and it's clean energy too, so that's good for the trees in Bramble Tusk. So everything's good, ticks the right boxes. Awesome, awesome. Um, what about you, Bardock Germs? What, what is your favorite building in this this magnificent town? Well, I, I like the the farm for some reason. It, it just seems different, different enough. Uh, Frodo's foot came up with the idea suddenly and, and it just, I don't know, it, there's something about it that I haven't seen built in any other Minecraft build before. I, I also personally like the, the guild that we are currently sitting in. It's I, I kind of like the way that, that ended out looking. And it's a nice focal point for us to all meet and, and chill out and gather. Yes, yes, indeed it is. So, um, out of all the miners, uh, I, I have a little inkling that, that you guys are the ones that started it all. Um, how is it working together with the other miners, uh, Rastrol? Well, it's great to work with a bigger team. That means you get things done quicker. And you can set yourself higher tasks, bigger projects. So yeah, it's been good. We did start it together, but it's good to have yep. an extra free people. Yeah, I mean, the more the merrier, but sometimes with too many people, things tend to get a bit complicated because we each have our uh, priorities, we each have our preferences. So, um, one last question, Miners. Um, what is the next project you're going to do? Because, quite frankly, I can't see you doing anything bigger, better, grander than, than Wevelton City. It's it's just out of this world. Next project, Rastral, I, I don't know. If, do we have anything? Yeah, we have a few ideas, but another good thing is our viewers keep on giving us lots of ideas. So that's always good to have loyal viewers to give us ideas. Yep. Thanks for that, guys. Fantastic, fantastic. It's been a great pleasure to talk to you guys. Um, yes, I shall be heading off now. So any last words?
uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> thank you we, for interviewing us. I th suppose. Thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for the interview and um, enjoy the rest of, of Wellington. As we leave the Miners Guild, we head on over to the next island, the University Island. Instead of traveling through the hopper system again, we decide to walk through the bridge. Each island is connected by a bridge system. The bridge system consists of roads above and a pedestrian access below. The view from the pedestrian bridge is quite spectacular. One can really appreciate the height at which we currently are. This island was created with education in mind. It contains Mentula's greatest learning facility, Wetherton City University. It is a self-sustained university, teaching many courses, everything from agriculture to sporting. Due to this, this island contains a farm. And a stadium. It also contains a hall where students can reside. Dr. Nabo, the Dean of this university, has taken some time from his busy schedule to grant us an interview. So we're meant to be meeting uh, Dr. Nabo in this lecture hall, um, but it seems the lights are off. Oh, there you are, Dr. Nabo. Hi, Hello. Doctor. So, Dr. Navo, how does it feel to work in such an epic, grandiose faculty of modern technology built by the miners of the Nexus themselves? My name is not Mr. Nav, excuse me very much. I am not Mr. Nav, but uh, I am uh, Mr. Jantor of uh, Wevelton uh, University very much. Oh, I, I understand. You, you don't like the calling you by your, by your surname, Mr. Janitor Nav. So, Dr. Janitor Nav, how does it feel to, you know, what, what sort of courses do you do here in this faculty? I, uh, of course, I do very much work. Uh, don't tell anyone I do no work. I do very much work here. Uh, like clean the toilets, I, uh, I brush the, um, the dashboard and uh, what not. Yes, very much work. Yes, um, brushing the, the dustboard is part of the cultural... Um, upbringing of the youth of, of tomorrow, I'm sure. Um, so what so are you talking about? Do you crazy? You come up here in the classroom and you talk like you with the mommy because I come locking the letter by this. Yeah, yes, quite. Um, Doctor um, Navo. Uh, so, so, how does it feel to be a, a doctor of you your caliber? Do not come and feel. You do not come feel me very much. I will do the crack touch on your face. I will come a kick in your face and don't do come a close. I just do no feeling. I I I don't quite get what, what where you're going with this. Is this some sort of psychological experiment that you're you're trying out on to 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 show our viewers the the way it works? You are you are getting on my nerves. I am trying to work over here in the clean the classroom for Mister uh, to come here and teach in the lecture room and the blah blah blah. And the, but I come here to just to clean the desk room. What is wrong with you? What? Yeah. Well, thanks thanks for your time, Mister Doctor Nabo. Uh, no, Doctor Nabo. My name is Bill. I come here to clean classroom. <laughs> Yes, quite. Uh, I, I shall take my leave then. Uh, yes, you go. Goodbye, well, good sir. Th thank. Uh, well, I do say that was rather interesting. We now head over to Wevelton Stadium, where we have an interview with one of its football players. Unfortunately, we couldn't get an interview with one of its good players, so instead we're stuck with one of the bench warmers. We're here at the Ernie Stadium, interviewing um, player number 19, is it? Um, Trevor Rudy. Hello, Trevor. 
Oh, hi, yeah, yeah, mate, uh, is it uh, Dingle Dick, yeah? <laughs> nah, nah, uh, yeah, well, you can call me Trev. Uh, okay, Trev. Um, Trev, um, why, what, what do you think about playing in a stadium named after a deceased goldfish? Well, you know, mate, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like such a great honour because that fish, you know, he died doing what he loved. He was trying to get freedom. He never gave up. And that's the motto of Wervelton Football Club. You know what I mean? Doesn't matter how many times it looks like we're going to sink to the bottom of the league. We try to leap right out, right out the box, pushing the envelope. Right, right. The envelope. Yes, that's very deep words there. Um, So, since this stadium was built, have have you played any matches here? Have you, you know, um, had any friendly matches or any champion cheap, cheap league, GBD, GBD doodahs here at all? Well, you know, uh, recently we've just been accepted into the wafer champion sheep. It's like a cup, you know, but it's in the shape of a sheep. Now, for many years, we've been trying to fight to get into this tournament, but because our stadium's up in the sky, we've had neighbours complain that we don't really have a stadium to play on. But hopefully soon we'll be playing against the rest of Mentula. Well, um, it's been a marvellous interview, Mr. Um, Rudy, and we hope that you have some very good luck with that uh, sheep uh, cup thing that you were mentioning. Well, yeah, th- thank you, uh, Dingle Dick. <laughs> After visiting the University Island, we are now on Webbleton's Entertainment Island, the Island of Las Weathers. It is known as a city that doesn't sleep because it drank too much caffeine right before bed and just couldn't get any shut-eye. On this island, we find Webbleton Broadcasting Corporation, where many television and radio productions such as this one are created. But its main purpose is a place for the residents of Wevelton and indeed the rest of Mentula to find a break from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. We can catch a film at the complex. Dance the night away at Shuriken nightclub or waste all of our hard-earned cash at the slots of Cock and Tubal's casino, which we are currently standing in front of. We now head into its grand games room to chat with Ivana Vananova, a blackjack dealer. Good afternoon, Miss Vananova. What exactly is your role in this casino? Oh, I hunt the Siberian wolves and protect the tribe from harm. What the hell do you think I do around here? We are sitting at a blackjack table, you durak. I beg your pardon, miss. Sorry for my ignorance. What do you think about the casino itself? It is such a grand and glorious structure. It must be a great pleasure to work here. What do you want me to say? It's a sphinx with a chin that looks like a huge yield duck. It is not particularly Caesar's palace. But I have heard that this building was erected as a monument to the great pharaoh Cock and Tubals, who ruled the ancient Navo desert. Surely this must inspire- Look, buddy, I just work here so I can earn a living. And maybe someday buy myself a penthouse in eggshell terraces. Can we please wrap up this interview so I can get paid and carry on with my life? Quite right. Sorry for the bother. Just one last question. How would you rate this casino in comparison with the other establishments on the island? That is the end of the interview. Either you play some blackjack now or you get out of my face. Pabnikal Kash! After spending our afternoon losing most of our money and dignity at the Cock and Two Balls Casino, we bump into two of the miners enjoying a late afternoon stroll around the island. Good afternoon, Frodo's Foot and Tepion. Thanks for granting us this interview in 
this marvelous town of Las Huevas. So, so this is the hip and happening area in in Webbleton, wouldn't you say? Um, does does this particular island get a lot of visitors? Uh, these the you know lots of tourism and such. Um, to be honest, uh, the actual islands haven't been opened until recently. So this summer we'll hopefully get um, quite a few people visiting here yeah, because this would be the entertainment center but more specifically we try to make an island for the people of Wellington so they could come on and enjoy the time in the cock and two balls and have a good night out in the shuriken and whatnot yeah I think we've we've been getting quite a few hits for possible stag dues in this island as well yes yes this island is particularly um, popular for stag dues and, and such events I, I have heard um, what is your favorite build in the entire Wevelton, Frodo's Foot? In the whole of Wevelton, I would have to say the Sky Farm, I think. And one of the main reasons behind it is because, one, it's completely different to anything I've seen on, on Minecraft so far. And two, because we built it at a time where we were all struggling with inspiration. And we were given a few new blocks by, by Minecraft, so that really gave us a a sharp kick up the backside into inspiration and designing and stuff, so I think that's my favorite. Yes, m most excellent. Uh, Tapion, what about you? What, what is your favorite? I think I'd have to say the Shuriken, because of its multi-storied, multi-styled, um, you know, disco area, and then it's got the sort of the cabana area and so all that kind of stuff, so yeah, the multifaceted rooms are quite, quite, quite cool. So, Tapion, I want to ask you a bit of a personal question here. I've heard that out of all the miners of the Nexus, you don't really enjoy the, you know, the building, the planning, uh, that sort of thing. I, I've heard that you're more of, the, of a gatherer, of, a, of an adventurer. What is it like working with the miners of the Nexus? Well, uh, I like the building side. Uh, what I don't like is the planning so much, but what I really used to enjoy was the, the gathering, the gathering in the mats, going out on adventures and discovering new places and discovering new things. And But yeah, I've had to adjust to to our new abilities of flying and you know using blocks with our powers and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, um, but but it's, it's a different kind of fun now. W one last question private personal question Frodo's foot and then I, I'll let you go on your way um what you know Tapion is always clutching onto his um beloved diamond sword there but you seem to have this passion for pink wool what, what exactly is it about pink wool that so you know enthralls you it reminds me of candy floss I like candy floss but no <laughs> basically what it is is that um I use it it's like a blueprint, but it's a pink print. It just stands out more. So if I want to lay out something quick and you just do that, it's not a natural color. It's not a color that you're really going to use in building unless you're, I don't know, doing a pimp shack or something and you want to put yes. pink floor. Or surrounded by pigs. Or surrounded by pigs. But um, it really stands out. So I find it's the best sort of material to use as, like a, as a template. You're less likely to confuse it with an actual part of a building. That's my, my tool of the trade. Excellent, excellent. Well, thanks for your time, and uh, we shall see you around Webbleton, I'm sure. Yep, I'm sure yep. we will. Our final island is perhaps the most important island in all of Webbleton. Health, safety, and power culminate together here. We can see service vehicles zooming across the evening sky. The Wevelton General Hospital offers the greatest health service in all of Mentula. The police and fire departments are also some of the best in the land. This island also houses a power station that boasts the safest and cleanest electricity you can find. Here, we meet up with the miners of the Nexus, world-famous redstone electrician, Den Gonzo. Thanks for this interview, Den Gonzo. The electrical engineer, excuse me. Uh, okay, yes, sorry, um, electrical engineer. My first question, how is it like being in, in so many 
electrical thingamajiggers. H- how how does it feel to have to build such inter- intricate things? Well, it really is quite fun. Um, when I joined the the miners, uh, they were t- taught me a lot of uh, how to construct things and uh, and stuff. But they were a bit lacking in in redstone wiring, so I decided to learn a bit and try and help them out, repay them for all they taught me. Yes, a gr- a great stuff. Um, so living down in the in the underground, as you did as an orc, um, how did it feel to come out into the open air and start building these huge edifices and these massive skyscrapers up in Webbleton? Well, you see, I hadn't really ever built a window or a door. We didn't need them down there. So, yes, it was quite a new experience building all these these huge buildings. And you know, up here in the in the, in the islands is great. You know, a lot of fresh air. It's totally different from where I come from. I'd also like to ask you. I've asked the other miners. Um, what what is your favorite build in in Webbleton? What, what most strikes you as as your favorites? Well, I think um, one of the most enjoyable one for me was the uh, fire station, where we had to build the not only the building. We did we did have some. A great lightning, lighting, and lighting stuff and things, and then the the vehicles we did, you know, the fire, the fire, um, the fire track and stuff. Yes, probably the I enjoyed myself a lot in the services island. The hospital was also a great build. Yes, quite quite a challenge. Um, so thanks for the interview, then Gonzo. I'd like to ask you one final request. Is it possible for you to serenade us with one of your famous Den Gonzo songs? Oh. Oh yes, I'm always glad to sing something. Um, I could sing "Starry Starry Night." Oh no, I'll I'll sing one about stars that my mum used to sing me when I was little. It goes something like, uh, "If I could catch a star before it touched the ground, I'd place it in a box, tie ribbons all around, and then I'll offer it to you." A simple token of my love and deep devotion. Scooby the boop boop. No, oh. sorry, sorry. I, I was really feeling that. Uh, okay. Sorry to cut cut in there. Yes. Um, yeah, th- thank you very much, Den Gonzo. Uh, no problem. After that lovely serenade by Den Gonzo, we head just across the road to Wevelton Fire Department, where Fire Chief Johnny Peter Lugax has graciously agreed to take some time out of his night shift for our final interview of the day. Well, yes, hello. Uh, first off, uh, I'd like to say hi to everyone. Uh, well, over here in Webberton, we, uh, each head of the department, are very good keeping uh, liaisons with each other. Um, so uh, I am very much, very much in the loop of how things are going over here. Uh, I'd like to say uh, uh, we do very well with the enforcement. Uh, starting with the police and uh, the hospital and us over here in the fire station we have everything very much under control very well. okay yes uh, very very good um particularly about fire fire um, how exactly do you combat fire in Webbleton? well over here we have a, a very high-tech system of, of uh, response um where our, our fire trucks go out very quickly because we have the power of uh, flyings, and uh, yes, we have very, very, very fast responses over here. Yes, uh, excellent stuff. Um, the 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 fire station has been built by the legendary miners of the Nexus, you could say, legendary. Um, so how how does it feel to work in such an epic building? Oh, see, yes, uh, this building is fantastic. Uh, basically, we asked the miners of the Nexus uh, uh, the specific things that we needed. Uh, for example, the gym and the and the living quarters for for the firemen and women. Uh, and the miners of the Nexus very graciously did everything that we needed. It's a very well equipped, high tech uh, building here. Okay, thank thank you for your time, Mr. Peter Lugax. It's been a pleasure. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. After a long day, it is with a heavy heart that we must say farewell to the magnificent Wevelton city. Back at the Braxton Tower, we catch the night train, which will take us back to our beloved Cobbleton. 
We hope that you will someday visit this gem sparkling in the skies of Mentula. You will no doubt enjoy and marvel at all it has to offer. I am Dominic Dingledick, and this has been Dingledick Discovers Wevelton. Farewell. I want to ask you a few questions about Wevelton, particularly about the, um, uh, um, you know, the the enforcement. Uh, uh, <laughs> just turned into a raptor here. <laughs> they do not come to the church uh, very often, but I know they are a very good people.